Good beautiful morning YouTube. It is Captain Jesso back with another video. Uh, part two of my Jesus, I can't remember the name of it now. <laughs> the Complete Collections Challenge, episode two. I'll get there at some point. And if you notice in front of me, we're gonna have a little more fun with it now. I've been waiting to actually do this video. The reason I've been holding this video off for a little bit is because I've been waiting for this to come in my brand new microphone so yeah uh i decided the audio quality of my videos previously was lacking i wanted to start building this up a little bit more i really want to start building and really kind of developing and flushing this channel out so now we have this guy set here so um for any of you guys that remember episode one we did ancient guardians i managed to go through collect the full set and we might potentially sell it that'll be down for a later episode we'll keep updates as we go who knows with that? But at the end of the day, this is the first set I ever fully, completely collected from start to finish. Well, now we've got episode two that I'm ready to start. Uh, and this, uh, if you did watch the first video, by the way, go watch the first video. Why didn't you watch the first video yet? Um, I tease a little bit about what we're going to be doing for collection number two or my second episode and for those who had a keen eye in the last video or watched my little tiny spoiler, you know we were going to do this the 2004 collection tins um basically for those of you who don't know um every year Yu-Gi-Oh has done some form of collectible tin years ago back when the game first came out they would do generally about six tins a year um with different promos so i had to bring myself back to this one and i went and chose this one for a couple of different reasons first of all reason number one is that it's a very old nostalgic set it's very classic i love collecting the old stuff if you know me by now you know i tend to collect a lot of this older stuff number two um i actually had one or two of these tins when i was a kid if i recall correctly i remember getting the inset queen tin and i'm pretty sure i got the swift guy the fierce knight tin so for me personally it's a very good uh you know it's a very good feeling to to go back and kind of relive this stuff here uh and reason number three is probably most importantly well i shouldn't say most importantly but another really important piece is that because i'm a budget Yu-Gi-Oh channel we're all about keeping things at a nice reasonable level and trying to collect into a nice reasonable level this is also not a super terribly expensive set to collect as long as your conditions are decently good again the ruling for myself is i tend to collect light play or near mint if i can possibly so um i do want to collect the 2002 and 2003 tin promos but when they're in really good condition they can get a little bit pricey and for good reason they're classic cards so let's start off with this story and kind of where it kind of started off with we're going to go under my ebay purchase history first and foremost no we're not we're going to go into the six promos first and foremost and kind of go over them very quickly now these promos are very cheap for another very good reason um for the fact that Almost none of these cards were actually really that playable. Um, in the actual meta format, um, we had... So we have six cards. We'll talk about these six cards. So card number one is Total Defense Shogun. Uh, basically, its effect reads that it's changed the defense position when it's normal summoned. So you basically have it permanently in normal summoned. And it can attack when it's defense position, but it uses its attack value. Not that great. Um, interesting, but not good. Blade Knight was one that actually kind of saw a little bit of competitive play. An actual, that was the only one I think in the series that actually had a little bit of use and is the priciest of the six uh, because it actually has a small bit of use in GOAT format. So basically, Blade Knight reads if you have one or less cards in your hand, the attack of this card in the field is increased by 400 points. So it immediately comes a 2000 attack beat stick if you uh, don't have many cards, which is a great late game card um and it also negates the effects of flip effect monsters destroyed by this card so you can start beating into things like magician of faith man eater bug things like that command knight was one that i actually played with a lot in warrior deck so basically um this this pier ends up being a, basically a giant defensive bead stick so uh, as long as there's another monster on your field you cannot attack this guy here and this attack gives every warrior a 400 attack boost so it wasn't bad in old school warrior beatdown decks you'd throw one of these guys on the field jump at a you know well actually what you'd do is you'd summon rotting captain and then summon this guy from your hand get two guys in the field for the price of one and this guy's attack automatically went to 1600 uh because he's a warrior type so pretty cool Swift Guy of the Fierce Knight, also used in certain warrior decks. I don't think it was incredibly that great. Um, it very bricky, but if it's the only card in your hand, you can special summon it without, basically just summon it without having to uh, tribute. But it is a normal summon. It's not a special summon. Uh, and the last two cards, so we've got Insect Queen. I'm not even going to go through the effect on this. Um, if you watch the anime, basically uh, this here as it, as it, as it attacks and, and kills things, um, it generates tokens, but you have to 
actually tribute a monster to attack with it. So you generate a token, you be able to use this as tribute fodder to attack. Not a great, not a great uh, boss monster by any stretch. And lastly, the obnoxious Celtic Guardian, um, basically an upgraded version of Celtic Guardian, obviously. Uh, basically, it just doesn't get banked uh, with a monster that's attack of 1900 or more. So you could throw this on the field, um, and it's a good defensive beat stick for, or I shouldn't say beat stick, but a good defensive wall for if your opponent had a late game big beat stick on the board. So anyways, uh, not to waste too much time with those, let's go through uh, and we'll talk about kind of how I got these and how we got a hold of them. That's assuming my eBay will work. So, this ended up starting, the idea for me to actually collect this started a little bit after the Ancient Guardians because I do buy and shop and sell a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and I ended up, um, after that, deciding, thinking about what I wanted to get. And when I was just buying in just in general with my Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, I ended up jumping on this here. The Swift Guy, the Fierce Knight, $6. Uh, it says light play condition. Now, I will say this right now. Uh, I have some of these cards here. We're going to be, that's why you see this here. Looking at these cards and looking at the actual conditions, I haven't actually checked the conditions of these guys yet. So we're going to go see if that, in fact, is true. We'll see how much eBay has lied to me. Now, I do a bit of my research before I buy. There's a couple of cards in this set, or in these, the, you know, the series that I actually didn't buy because people were advertising them as light play or whatever play uh, or near mint and they were not in very good condition and they were very overpriced these were very hard to come by so i ended up buying that as a good deal and i decided for you know 375 plus your shipping i was going to see if i could complete this whole set um so after that doing some looking around basically i went through and just kind of clack clack clacked in all of these set uh, all the cards from this set just to see if there's anything i could just snag at the market immediately the thing that i got after that actually and this took me a little bit was uh total defense shogun i believe i actually sent an offer for this i don't think i paid full price for this card uh, as it was listed uh i ended up seeing it slamming it at a decent deal uh the picture looked good for the light play so i figured you know what let's scoop it up so we got that after that, though, it was kind of interesting. I went on a dry spell for a few days. So we'll see that August 8th, I ordered this guy here. August 10th, we got uh, the Total Defense Shogun. But it took me another three days to get a hold of this Blade Knight. So I consistently had my eBay set to give me alerts when any of the cards I didn't have would keep would pop up for sale. And the thing with like the Blade Knights and things like that were there was ones on the market, but again, they were so overpriced for what they were. Uh, this guy had these listed at about $20 each, I think. Um, I tried to bargain him down to, I think, $13 plus $2 shipping for $15 total. Uh, we ended up agreeing on $14, so I ended up getting one of these guys at $14. I haven't actually received this one yet. Um, this is one of the few that, yeah, uh, haven't actually gotten in the mail yet. So I, this is one of the ones I am waiting for to come in. We'll actually check to see what the condition and things like that are. Uh, when I do get it, we'll make another uh, kind of an update video. Uh, so again, after that, went a little bit dry for the rest of the day. I was like, I spent, I think I almost got canned from work because of much time I just wasted just trying to get a hold of these. Um, but anyways, I got a, the next day after that, the 14th, I got a notification about this guy, the Command Knight. Uh, and same deal again, it was on a best offer, um, it was in definitely near my condition, it looked really nice, um, and again, 9 bucks with shipping, so 12 bucks is all that cost me. And the one I didn't think I was going to get, this is one for the entire time, because I started doing this on August the 8th. This took me a week to find, which I think is a lot. And I did explore every resource, by the way, and I should specify this. I did go to through different sellers. I went through different uh, websites, face-to-face, -face, 401 games, just singles websites. Nobody either had this in stock or it just wasn't a great price for what I was trying to order it from. Um, I could have ordered probably a little bit cheaper from a website like TCG Player. Again, it sucks being in Canada that I don't get all the great value that you would normally get. Um, from being an American buying off TCG player. So that's one thing to consider when you're looking at these prices for American viewers. We don't get the benefit of really clean, good pricing like you would on TCG player. Um, I just couldn't find this guy. I spent a week trying to find this insect queen and this finally popped up 872. I think I ended up getting, no, I didn't even uh, get a uh, an offer on this. I just went in and I put in on this. So with that all being said, I at this point had now had five purchased out of the six. And I was, the last one we were missing was the obnoxious, no, what was it I was missing? I actually can't remember, was it, yeah, the obnoxious Celtic Guard, okay, yeah, that was the one I was missing. So I, I couldn't get a hold of it, I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it, and eventually I ended up posting on one of my Facebook groups that I'm in, because this guy here, um, the obnoxious Celtic Guard, was extremely expensive. Like, if I even go on eBay right now, like, I'm just going to go in here, I'm just going to show you the kind of pricing that people are having, like, set these up for. And this isn't anywhere near the market price for these, or what I believe is a decent 
market price. So let me just bring this up right now. You watch. It's probably like a big steal now that I've already bought it. Um, but people were regularly listening, like light play copies of these at seventeen dollars, twenty five dollars, fifty. Like that's way over price. Um, if you look on TCG Player, you can buy these at like six to eight dollars US, you know, American dollars. Um, ah, that's moderate play. I don't care too much about that. That's that's whatever. Um, so like I don't really want moderate play. Like the the lowest price, like light play or near band. Like we're talking almost twenty dollars. That's like super overpriced. So I ended up posting posting a looking for post, like I said, on Facebook, um, and and some of the collectible and buying and selling groups that I'm in to see if maybe somebody would have one of those just to, um, you know, had one to sell me, um, and I was willing to pay a fairly decent coin even over what TCG Player's value is because most buy and sell groups use TCG Player, whatever their general lowest price is, as a kind of a, a, a rule of thumb or a price point for these. Anyways, I ended up, uh, after posting looking for a post, it took a few days, but I ended up getting a message from a guy uh, named Mateos Kikados. If I mispronounce that, buddy, I'm sorry, but I just want to give this guy a shout out. So he ended up actually messaging me saying that he's got one of those. He sold it to me for well under what I was willing to pay for it. Um, I paid about $10, that's including the shipping on it. Um, and the dude pulled through really hard for me, and I probably, for a couple of these cards, should have seen if I was able to get a hold of some of them even on these groups, but I do think that what I paid for them on eBay is fairly reasonable given what they're generally selling for on eBay, because I'm using eBay as the the rule of thumb tool, if you will. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to this guy, Mateos. He ended up, like I said, selling this to me for about 10 bucks. Um, so that was the last piece I needed. I had it. I now have bought, I don't quite have in my collection, or I shouldn't say own, but not, you know, not arrived, but I now have collected all six pieces of this. Um, and that's thanks to Mateo. So I just want to give a uh, shout out to his shop, uh, Port Union Card Shop. Um, I'm not being paid for that, but I just want to give this guy a huge shout out. He was super friendly. This guy was uh, went above and beyond um, to to get this to, to work this out for me. And he's got tons of good options, tons of good prices. Go have a, go have a check on his eBay page, like please. Um, I really appreciate it. Really thank it again. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. So let's talk about the money. Right? I don't like talking about the money on this channel, but let's just talk about the money for just a second. So basically uh, what I like to do when I buy these, when I go for – try to sell or buy or collect a full set is I like to have a Pixie and see exactly um, what – a full set would sell for versus the single of cards and Mateos actually has posted right now um the full six pieces um not all of them are in like perfect condition you'll notice like some of these here you can notice like you've got a little bit of edge wear um you know he says played i don't think played is really like they're you know light played a maybe moderate play in some of these like even looking at the backs i don't think any of these are in like super horrid condition so i think honestly there's a day left i may have to even just throw a bid in it and get myself a second collection for my own personal use i guess but like you look at this like yeah there's some scratching in the backs of those like you know edge wear but they're not in the worst condition honestly and maybe i'm just not nitpicky about condition but i'm gonna drop a bit on these but i'm curious to see what this sells at to give me at least a bit of a benchmark because if i went to through past EVs, previous ebay sold listings i actually couldn't find this guy at all uh couldn't find this full set so i have no idea exactly what they'd sell for obviously i'm just going based on what you you know what you paid for the cards basically what your market value times all those together is but we'll see so let's get down to the money here i did a little bit of math here uh in terms of kind of what my expectations are, what my hopes are with this with this set. If I don't get it, again, I have something I've got I can hold on to and, and collect and maybe down the road it'll end up holding a little more value because of being, you know, older tin promos, but they're so undervalued. I think honestly everybody should be getting these. They're so undervalued. They're so cheap for being tin promos from the really the third ever wave of collectible tins from 2004. They're steel. So, back on track here. Let's talk money. So I spent altogether, everything said and done, $63.50 for all of these cards. So that averages out to be, what, $10.50 a card? Not bad, considering all of them are in decent condition, or at least I think they are. 
Um, in order to break even, if I were to sell these on eBay, considering eBay fees, to break totally even on eBay, I would have to sell these for $74.42. Now, the standard that I use when I sell on eBay uh, to actually make a little bit of profit back, uh, I consider it as a 25% margin. So for me to make a 25% margin, not withholding my shipping, we're talking about $93. It was like $93 and like five cents or something like that, I think, when I totaled it right up. Uh, what's my expectation to sell this at? I'm looking at trying to sell this, I think, for about $100 if I can and sell it at $100. Like I said, I don't know if I'll get that, but eBay is always a wild card, so I guess we'll see. But we're going to keep using that, uh, you know, uh, whatever I'm going to call that, that thing, that posting that's up right now that's currently being bid on. We'll use that as a bit of a benchmark to see. Maybe it's wallet or valid. Maybe I overpaid. Who knows? Again, I'm not American. I don't get crazy deals. Uh, and lastly, so if I sell it at $100 at my goal, what do I take home for profit? We're talking about $21.94, or I make a gross margin of about $34. I don't think that's too terribly bad. Um, so the last thing we're going to do today, I'm going to pull up my camera here. We're actually going to have a look at these, and I have one super exciting thing I want you to hold on. If you're thinking about maybe, oh, we're get, getting running long, we're, we'll keep this video short. I always don't like to run too long, but I'm going to show you something that I thought was really super spectacular. Okay, yeah. Uh, these are all still in the top loaders. I haven't pulled these out. I haven't looked at the conditions. We're going to do that now. So I'm going to record. Okay, and we're good. So the first one I have is the Insect Queen here. We're going to pull this out. We're going to look at the condition. We're going to look for scratching, surface, edge wear, and see what the actual play of your, you know. First of all, I love these sleeves. Um, like, this looks like a penny sleeve, but this is, like, really, like, firm. It's a really good quality sleeve. So whoever sent this, whoever shipped this, um, I'll give you some good feedback on eBay. Um, looking at this guy here... This has got to be near mint. The back on it looks incredible. This is incredible. Oh my god, the centering on this. Have a look at the centering on this. Look at the black border on this side, and look at the black border on this side. The centering is god awful. I would almost consider sending this like, uh, for grade. Um, the surface has almost no wear whatsoever. I know the corners are crisp, but they're like, they're like, you know, the corners are, are in good shape. They're not rounded. They're, uh, they're, you know, really nice what does the fun look like that, that looks incredible um i would 100 percent consider sending this for grading although uh you see there's a little bit of whitening on the bottom there so it's not perfect but the centering wouldn't make it perfect anyways this would not get a 10 if anybody is curious but still that is beautiful condition that is incredible especially for like i paid like 12 dollars for that easily top tier easily by the way i'm gonna make a complaint right here right now uh because i'm a complaining pants um Tape on top loaders for people who use scotch tape. Not good. Not nice. Next card we have is a Swift Guy of the Fierce Knight. Um, this is the first one I actually got. Um, I've been holding on to this for a while. Haven't pulled it out. Haven't looked at it. I wanted to do this on camera. I really want to make this a, you know, a, a, a user experience. Is there a little bit of foil shifting on that? You see on the right there, there's a little bit of... I'm going to pull this right up. One second. Let's get this into some light. Yeah. Let's go. I'm just going to pull this up here. So let's reference. Okay, maybe there is a little bit of white line on the side. Okay, never mind. Uh, I just wanted to have a quick quick look. I thought there was a fall shifting on this. I'm done. So let's go back to condition. Again, really nice. Card looks really good on the front. Um, there's definitely a bit of edge wear on it. It's not super perfect. Centering's all right. The back has a little bit of wear on it. Um, that's to be expected. These old promos were not packaged very well, so they tend to get a little wear. But other than some minor scratching, um, the corners aren't the greatest on this. You can see the top corner and the bottom corner here are a little bit worn. They're not perfect, but uh, again, still definitely near mint. There's nothing, you know, maybe like I'll, I'll consider it light play for this for the sake of being honest when I'm selling it just because of the little bit of scratching in the back. But I would I would personally buy that as a near mint card. I would accept if I got that and bought that as near mint. And somebody said it, I would totally be like, yep. Obviously, these two guys came from the same seller, just based on the sleeves here. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to go look at these sellers later and, and, and give them some uh, good feedback. So, we've got the Shogun. Again, looking at the centering, not perfect. Um, front surface, everything here looks really good, actually. Um, yeah, the back, there's whitening on the edges here in the back. So again, not perfect. This is definitely light play, but it's it's actually a really nice, it's a good, in good shape for what it is. Some back scratching, but no, this is actually a really good card. I'm happy with that. Uh, not not upset whatsoever with the conditions on these, and especially for the price I paid for them. Not not at all rattled by this. 
Um, and lastly, this is the special one I want to tell you. So this is the big spoiler for the end of the video. This set is actually notorious for having, I don't like to call it a misprint. I don't think misprint is the right word, although it kind of is. Um, but it's not like a crazy like name shift or anything like that. But one thing in the quality control, and I don't know how this actually happens, but there's a foiling misprint on this specific set. And this actually makes some of these cards a little more valuable and more rare. And I'm going to show you this. So obviously we're aware that with secret rares, you have that nice silver shiny name and you have that, you know, that glittery foil. You can kind of see that there, right? That's the glittery foil. Well, I don't know how Konami managed to screw this up whenever they print these cards but i'm going to show you this command knight here um and this is a well-known defect misprint whatever you want to call these cards this has got the secret rare name but if you look at the foiling on this this doesn't have the shiny foiling or the the glittery foiling it has it has basically a super rare or ultra rare foiling on this guy so it doesn't have that because a uh, secret rare has all those lines again we're going to compare this just side by side i only pulled that out of the sleeve for a second here so your secret rares have you see that glittery background where this guy here doesn't have that. So that's actually a well-known, again, misprint, whatever you want to call it with this set, um, that uh, every one of these promos can actually be bought as a super rare. And I don't know if that was just, like I said, a printing error or what it was, but a wave of these tins got sent out with that foiling. I actually didn't realize this. I didn't buy this with the intention of getting that misprint or anything like that. I had no... I had literally no idea until the other day when I was just organizing here and I pulled this card out to have a quick look at it and I went, holy shit, I got it. I've got one of those copies. So yeah, that's one other well-known thing with this that I actually get to show off with this collection. I think that's really amazing. Uh, but looking at condition otherwise, that's just a little bit of dirt in the top. Looks good. Centering's not horrible on this. Oh my God. Yeah, that's like, that's clean. You can probably see a bit in the light there. Like, again, these do tend to get a bit of back wear on them because of the way they get treated in the tins. Other than the bottom corner here, a little bit white, a little bit, a little bit dinged out. Like, yeah, top corner's not super, still super great. Would I send these for grading? No, I don't think any of these here are super gradable. Um, I would not get a 10 on any of these, but all these cards, incredible conditions, incredible, incredible. I am, I am so pleased. Uh, with what I got there. Um, I'm going to keep this one short. I know we're running somewhere towards, well, over 20 minutes now, so uh, I won't take up any more of your guys' time. This has been episode two of the Complete Collections Challenge. I want you to stay tuned for episode three. Uh, we're going to be, once I get the last two promos that I'm missing in, we'll do a video on that. What am I going to be doing next? What's the next part of my set? And I actually have this one almost completely finished, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler right now. For anybody that remembers the Dark Beginning, does anybody remember Dark Beginning, that set? Um, uh, Dark Beginning is a reprint set. Now, I'm not going to collect the whole set. I think it's a little too pricey. Some of the cards are super expensive. But what I will collect, because this is by far my favorite, uh, my favorite card or favorite thing of all time, if you will, if I can find a proper picture. Don't mind me. I'm just bad at Googling things. Exodia the Forbidden One. So, next set we're going to be going for, I want a full DB1, Dark Beginnings 1 collection of Exodia. Uh, and I'm already getting almost the way there, so we're going to do a video on that soon. Stay tuned, boys. Have a good night, weekend, evening. It's Saturday. It's beautiful outside. I'm going to go hang out with the boys. I'm going to catch you guys on the flip side. Bye.